Ingredient, I'm Lily and today I'd like to show you how you can snip into your die cuts to create your own decoupage. Now today I'm working with a die set from our Tattered Lace Wonderful Wilderness Collection and this is called the Lion Family. And as you can see, it's this gorgeous lion family here with several lions within this image. It's not a 3D decoupage die, but I would like to show you how we can actually turn this flat image into our own decoupage design. So as you can see here, I've got the Charisma sheet and within one A4 sheet, we've filled it with as many images as we possibly can. And I've just popped this through my printer, printing it at actual size. And then all I've done is I've just run it through my die cutting machine three times. So we've got three of the same image. And now the beauty of having several of the same design on one sheet means that we can get multiple cuts from this one sheet. So within one sheet, we've got six different images. And in this instance, I've only used half of them. So I'd have another three spare for another project. So we've got three of the same design. And what we want to do now is we want to start snipping into these designs to create our own 3D decoupage, which is gonna give our projects lots of depth and dimension and make them look really, really special. So one of our images, we're always gonna keep whole. So one of them, we're gonna take the full design and we're just gonna leave it to one side. That's gonna be our base layer. That's going to be the background. So we've got all of the image contained within that one die cut. Our next two layers we're actually going to snip into. Now, as I've mentioned, I've cut three of the image. So we're going to have the base layer and two layers of decoupage. The number of images you die cut is completely up to you. I find three generally works quite nicely, but depending on how much depth you want to create, you might be wanting to add two layers, three layers, even four layers. The way I tend to work it is I'll actually look at the die itself and look into which areas I want to snip away and then sort of just work out how many layers of decoupage I'm going to need and just take it from there. But if you are wondering, three is quite a nice number just to go to if you are sort of stuck as to how many layers of decoupage you would like. So what we do when we're thinking about decoupage in a die up is we need to think about perspective. But that sounds a little bit scary. So the way I think of it as is you're just looking at what's in front of what, what's overlapping what, and what's furthest forward within that image we're going to have in the top layers and it's going to be raised up the most. What's every, whatever is in the background, we're not going to raise up as much as it's not going to be standing as far forward. And it is really quite simple when you get into it. So don't overthink it too much. Don't worry about it and start thinking, oh, perspective, that sounds really technical. It doesn't have to be technical. It can be really easy. So we've got our first full layer. Our next layer up, we're going to cut a little bit more away from it. So as you can see, the large line here and this line here are behind this group of lines. So we're going to cut those two away so we end up just with this group of lines. Now I'm using a fairly small pair of scissors just to allow me to get into the fine detail. If we turn the die cut over, we can see we've got lots of cut lines within there. And that's very, very typical of tattered lace dies. We've got that cut line detail that brings out the detail within the Charisma coloured artwork but it also means it's very, very easy to snip into our dies. All we're doing really is we're following these cut lines and we're just connecting them. So I'm pretty much just snipping those pips away and releasing this image and releasing the parts that I want to keep. So I'm not even particularly cutting, I'm just snipping between the lines just to release the image. So it's really very easy to do because all the clues are already there. So I've snipped away now the larger lion, and then I'm gonna snip away this line. As I can see, he is behind this line here. So we want to raise the line in the front up more. We want that line that's behind this line to be further into the background to give us that sort of depth of field and that perspective that's gonna make our designs really stand out. So as you can see, we've cut away this group of lines, and that's gonna be our first layer of decoupage that's going to go over our main image. Now for our top layer, we need to look into here and we need to look what's going to be furthest forward. And whatever is furthest back, we're going to cut away just like we did on that layer we've just cut into. So as we can see, these two lines at the front are standing in front of this line here. So what I'm going to do on this final upper layer, I'm just going to cut these two lines out as these are the ones that are at the front of the image. So again, we're just snipping into this image, just going between the cut lines 
So it's very, very easy to do this. You're not having to worry too much about being really good at cutting out as we are pretty much just connecting the lines and just to release these two lines from the main image. And then we're gonna be adding these to our layer below. So nearly there, just cutting around these two. And of course you can be doing this with any die whatsoever. I've just chosen this die set um, as I thought it worked quite nicely to decoupage, but of course you can be doing this with any of your tattered lace dies whatsoever. So we can see now we've got three separate layers, our base, our middle and our top layer. And now we're gonna have to glue these together. So what I like to do is I like to actually add a little bit of shape to my layers. So I use a pokey tool, do just take care with the sharp end, but I use a pokey tool as it's sort of cylindrical and I can just roll this die cut around that cylindrical barrel. You can of course use a um, foam mat and a shaping tool, a bowl tool, perhaps one of your flares tools. Um, if you find that way easier, then that's absolutely fine. I, this is just the way I tend to shape my decoupage layers, but it is of course completely up to you. So I've added a little bit of shape into there, just rounding their bodies to give that extra bit of dimension, that depth and give them a realistic quality. Doing the same on the top layer, and I would always recommend trying to shape each layer the same way that you shape the one below. And that just means that they'll fit over each other nicely. So I wouldn't round this bottom layer that way and then the upper layer in the opposite way, as they wouldn't sit over each other so nicely. Now it's time to stick it together. Now we want to add depth and dimension to this, so we don't want to use a flat glue, so we don't want to use a wet glue or something like a double-sided tape. We want to use something with a little bit of depth to it, so something like foam tape or foam pads or a 3D glue gel like your pin flare is going to be perfect. It's completely up to you which one you prefer, I just prefer using foam tape. A lot of people do actually prefer using a pin flare glue gel or any other glue gel. It's completely up to you and what you're most comfortable with. I'm using 3mm depth foam tape. Foam tape comes in a variety of both widths and depths. I'm using a thicker one and I'm adding foam tape only to the areas that are most curved and I'm leaving the areas that are least curved without any of the foam tape and that's just going to allow me to keep that shape that I've added in um, using the pokey tool. So it's going to keep that curve to our layers. If I was to add um, foam tape all over that area it would just end up flattening the image out we would still have depth and dimension but we wouldn't have so much shape and the shape is what gives it that realistic quality so just line that image back over the top of the one below and just glue it down you will find that if you use a glue gel you will get that little bit of maneuverability just to slide the image around until you're totally happy with it if you are using foam tape or foam pads and you would like that maneuverability, you can of course add a little bit of wet glue um, to the backs of them once you've peeled the back off and that will give you that little bit of time to maneuver the image about until you're totally happy with the positioning. Of course the other thing about using foam tape instead of a glue gel is that it dries instantly so if you do need to pop your card in the post straight away then I would probably go for your foam pads or foam tape. So our top layer i.e. the part of the image that's raised up most, is furthest forward, it's overlapping the most things, is going to be added on like so. And you can see very easily and pretty quickly really, we've created an image with lots of depth and dimension. We've pretty much transformed that image. We've given that sense of perspective. We've snipped into our die cuts. But as you can see, it's easy enough to do. And I think once you start doing this, you'll be doing it with all your dies. You'll be looking into how you can snip into your dies and add dimension. But it does just give that finishing touch.